people are always already marked as killable, always already marked as dead. Black people's life has always been tethered in value to how we are situated in the economy. So when I try to relate the biological grieving to the grieving of a social death, is would you say your work is part, is that grieving process in a way of trying yeah. to... Like shit, it could be a black person getting they getting their head, you know what I'm saying, beat in, you feel me, and not receiving justice, you know what I'm saying? And that's that that it causes a collective mourning. I, my question when I asked you off mic was about how the experience you've had around death in your life and how that's shaped you or has put you on the path that you're on right now. Mm -hmm. And you brought up Afro pessimism, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, would you tap into that? Maybe explain yeah. a little bit about what yeah. that was because you're, yeah. you're putting me yeah. on right now. Man, for the people listening that's not familiar with me, I come from a, 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 a deep college background of policy debate where we used a lot of academic and literature basis to talk about policymaking and to talk about identity. You feel me? Um, Afro-pessimism was the first literature base that I fell in love with that was able to give me a way to, what well, Huey P. Newton says, define the phenomenon and make it act in a desired manner. You know what I'm saying? That's what Huey P. Newton, the co-founder of the Black Panther Party, says. He said that power is the ability to define the phenomenon and make it act in a desired manner. When I was 19, I read some, some shit from Huey P. Newton, and that's kind of what made me think about the world differently and made me feel like I had power over how how my phenomenon was being read and how I was positioning this phenomenon called life. You feel me? So shit, when I turned like 22, that's when I started picking up Afro-pessimism as, as a literature base in terms of debating. And that's when I started to think about the Black experience and the Black position in a much more critical way. So Afro-pessimism being a, a, a academic literature, or I guess I would say a, 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 academy, a academic spot, you know what I'm saying, about how uh, black people in America particularly, but also have international, you know what I'm saying, analysis, but how black Americans particularly are positioned in a constant state of social death and how um, the uh, Western civilization, America, you know what I'm saying, is able to politically, socially, and economically progress and sustain itself through this social death. You know what I mean? And how I will understand social death breaking down simply is just like the way in which black people are excluded from social life, right? We can acknowledge that from a legal, from a, a legal, from a political, from an economic and a cultural, you know what I'm saying, space that structurally black people are excluded from those things in terms of just basic human rights, right? For me, when you ask me the question like, so what is your unique relationship to how you experienced death when you grew when you grew up, when you was growing up? To me, it's like I'm not conscious of those things when I'm growing up. It's not to when I start to become much more critical and no pun intended, again, conscious about how my life is, how I've been able to navigate it based off how I'm positioned. You feel me? So when I learned about social death, it made me think about, damn, this, this is able to speak to how black people are always already marked as killable always already marked as dead. And for me, being a Southerner from Texas, I, I understood it from like shit, the lynching, the era of lynching, right? We can recognize that black life was so valuable to America, you feel me, in, in times of slavery, that the way that black death was experienced in this country, it wasn't as pervasive. Were slaves murdered? Definitely. But when we think about the way in which black people were lynched after slavery was outlawed and how black life was sustained during slavery, we can acknowledge there's a difference, right? So when we look at the, from an economic standpoint, a purely economic standpoint, you can recognize that black people's life has always been tethered in value to how we are situated in the economy. So once slavery becomes outlawed, we recognize that a lot of poor white people view black people as mere competition in the marketplace. So it incentivizes more social death, right? where it's literally a whole bunch of lynching going on. When we have a world war, you know what I'm saying? You know, when that starts to roll around or we start to have industrialization roll around, black labor, black bodies are now needed in factories. They're now needed in plants and steels. So now we see that black death, it goes down. So when you ask the question, it's like, what is your unique relationship to death? I automatically thought about it and filtered through, I'm from Bryan, Texas, you feel me? I've been, my, 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 my life been shaped by the prison industrial complex and shaped by white supremacy in ways where it's literally de, it's impacted how I define myself and how I define the world. So when you ask me, I'm thinking of how the, the political thought of death and the literal, like biological death 
and how like them two things are separate and distinct, but how they play together. Whew. Damn, brother. And that implication of you, you hit the nail on the head when you said biological death, because clearly that's I think the first assumption when people talk about death, but there's clearly many forms of death. So even though you're alive, you could be living a life that is not quite alive in many ways. So that when you when you use the word death, you're insinuating a beginning somewhere, right? So what is that? What where did it start? Like is it you saying it's was it slavery? Is that what you're yeah, alluding yeah. to? Like that's the uh, day Afro, one death. Yeah, yeah. Afro pessimism continues that. Uh, the slave got onto the boat, or Africans got onto the boat as African and got off the boat as slave, as, as black. And contends that black people experience an ontological death, ontology being a fancy word for being and becoming. You feel me? So the way that black people be and the way that black people become is structured by the middle passage, the triangle trade, when we took African people from Africa and brought them to the Caribbean and then shipped them from North America to South America to Europe, saying that black people experience a certain natal alienation. You know what I'm saying? And how, you feel me, and how we experience the world. Natal alienation being, I have a master's degree in human relations and I can acknowledge that conflict is a... a, a integral part of the human, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, experience, right? I can acknowledge that in Scotland, lowlanders and highlanders fought each other, you know what I'm saying? I can acknowledge, you feel me, that, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, William the Conqueror was the last person to invade England and this, that, and the other, right? What I also can acknowledge is making unique distinctions, you know what I'm saying? What's, what's, what's different about, uh, about, about chattel slavery that black people experience is that the entire world view black people through the eyes of the slave master. Natal alienation is how black people become separated from land, from culture, from language. You become a people of no land, a people of no culture, a people of no language. Now, it's now so much you go through a constant state of otherization that your body is a fungible thing that can be used to make to, to, to better whatever life it is. You see what I'm saying? May it be emotionally or may it be like materially. And I feel like just, you know, going back to something simple as Huey P. Newton saying, define the phenomenon and make it act in a desired manner. Afro-pessimism gave me the language to speak to the black experience in a way that I feel like I wasn't able to use. When we think about racism, we think about that shit in terms of like the political economy of racism, i.e. racism makes money, right? Afro-pessimism gave me a way to understand the libido economy, the economy of emotions and the economy of feelings and how anti-black violence is also driven through that understanding, you feel me, of libido violence. We can acknowledge that when a slave master is flogging and decapitating the slave, that's not going to no economic, you know what I'm saying, advantage. But we can acknowledge that there is something libido, the feelings, emotions, the economy of that, that's cathartic, that made where a person is incentivized to do crazy things to black people, right? To me, Afro-pessimism was a way for me to really understand political, socially, economically, how I can build. And I view it as more of a description of the world. And for me, like, like uh, ideologically, I view like Afrofuturism as almost like a, 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 a prescription to kind of move through the world. You feel me? When, when you talk about, so with all this kind of put together, when you talk about, uh, you know, a sociological, a social death, and you relate it to a biological death, there's a grieving process. This is such a different perspective because this is, gen this is generational. This is uh, collective. You know what I mean? It's not just th the grief of one person. Yeah, yeah. So w when I try to relate the biological grieving to the grieving of a social death, is would you say your work is part, is that grieving process in a way of trying yeah. to bring back to life? Like what, what is the transition and what is that grief process of social death? To me, the grieving process of social death I would go to the alleged statement of Harriet Tubman. I've known that it's been uh, a, a battle that she did not say this, but I think it still is a powerful tool to how we think about imagining, imagining, you feel me? She was allegedly asked, like, you know, what is, like, like, like do she wish she could have saved more people or how she wish she could have saved more people from the plantation? And she said something allegedly, you feel me, about if I could have convinced them they were slaves, I would have been able to help more people, right? So for me, I think about like raising consciousness in a way where I'm born and raised in Bryan, Texas. I didn't know Fox News was a right wing conservative until I was 19 or 20. I thought that Fox News, the channel, the news was objective, empirical, everything, right? I'm not aware of the way in which I'm positioned. I'm living it, but I'm not conscious of it. So for me, it's thinking about 
how collective trauma works and how like shit, it could be a black person getting they getting their head, you know what I'm saying, beat in, you feel me, and not receiving justice, you know what I'm saying? And that's that that it caused a collective mourning. You know what I'm saying? I think about like in terms of death and how we bridge social death to biological death. When a black person is biologically murdered and the state backs it up and enforces that murder, that that death, black people collectively experience, you know what I'm saying, experience that. And we understand how we are marked infinite, like, yeah, almost like I am Trayvon Martin. I am Sandra Bland. We acknowledge that we can be done that way because the world relates to our bodies in that particular way. That's That to me is simply the way that black folks acknowledge how we live in a constant state of social death. So to me, what it means to like, like, like go through that healing process to me is like being able to let people understand. Like, for, like a lot of people are grieving and they don't know. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like in general or specifically with you know, social, we're talking about, we're talking about I think social. both ways. I think, I think, I think, I think, we know that grief can manifest itself in many ways. This is a loss, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's thinking for- about the ways that we have, like how, how, we, how we grieve with those losses. And then for me thinking about it on a, on a, on a like sociological, philosophical in terms of grieving, it's like when you, as a black person, when you feel as if you're being told you can't get something or you can't access something based off of how you position that grief you deal with. Right. And then thinking about how today I did a little talk at San Bernardino College, you know what I'm saying? And one of the students had asked me about, hey, how do you feel when black people protest, when white people kill us, but we don't protest when when when, when black people kill us? And I like I felt weird t- like saying it to him, but it was like, hey, peep game, the beef is not death. If Tyrone killed Pookie, Tyrone taking his ass to jail. We do not have to protest to make sure that this person is held accountable for their death. If a police officer or a random white person kill a black person, it is likely that they're going to get off, right? So when we're protesting, we're not protesting the death. We recognize death is a, is a, it's a natural state of life. We're protesting the injustice that is the death. You see what I'm saying? And being able to recognize how like that grief and the healing and all that shit go with that part, part for specifically and what I feel like my work is doing. I'm trying to raise consciousness about how you understand yourself how the world is positioned and make it where you can define the phenomenon and make it act in a desired manner. And I know that grief is is a phenomenon. (laughs) 